old enough that I date back to the horse and buggy days and when dad was very active in the community and he realized that the service that he wanted to provide was not available at the time and he decided that he would go into it himself. He went into it in an unorthodox way, in an old fashioned way, he pioneered the business and each of the me and my three, two brothers, the three of us, was followed in the same business. One of the most rewarding things in this business, and one that makes it attractive as far as I'm concerned, has been that you're helping people when they're having to, in trouble, helping people where, when they're in mourning. And people that are in trouble are more their natural selves, which you appreciate knowing them as their natural selves, and me, you come and you're able to give them service, and service is one of the big things in, in this business, and it always has been. It's been repulsive for some people, but I like it. Uh, and the performing of embalming depends a lot on the cause of death. The, if a person, for instance, is wounded, is injured in an automobile accident, or any other kind of an accident, traumatic accident, there would have to be different treatment for them than anyone who dies of a natural death. Of course, there isn't any natural death because everybody has an ailment when they're, that is a terminal to them or an injury that's terminal to them. And each of them makes a plan. And it's interesting to work for people. I, one thing about it, when people are in mourning, they're more their natural selves. When, uh, my dad was in the business. He used the, this, what we call a cooling board, as an embalming table that we take into the home. Frequent, very, it was quite often, most of the time, the people that were uh, embalmed were left right in the home. And, and this was, is what we call the cooling board on which we put the bodies and they were embalmed in the home and left in the home from the time that they died until we, we were taken to the church. And they were embalmed at home. And this had a lift here where we could put the head up and then and they all had headrests. But the, this is the regular embalming machine that we used. And that and that you used when I first came to Fillmore we had the, the we didn't have the regular porcelain embalming tables that we have now, the embalming tables that we have now, this is what we call a cooling board that's used for the remains to remain on and to be dressed before they were put in the casket. Okay, this Funeral coach belongs to Roger in the business. It came with him in the business. He's of my four sons. He's the only one that followed the funeral business, and he now has businesses in Fillmore, Beaver, and Milford, and is doing a fine job with it. On Lou was the oldest of the boys, of the three boys in the family. There was Lou and Joe and I, and because Lou, Lou mar uh, married Margaret. Joseph from Beaver, and Joe's wife Violet was a, from was born in Sweden. She came from Sweden, and Lou's business has been perpetuated by D taking taking it over, and Elwood, who married Lou Jean, who was Lou's oldest daughter, started the business in Orem, and they've done have been very successful there. Uh, I came here to Fillmore. We were on our way to look over Beaver and we stopped here and a man named James A. Kelly had a, a funeral business here and we took over and we've run this ever since. I've been here for many years and people have been kind to us and we've enjoyed Fillmore and it, it's worked nice and Roger's taken over and Roger runs the business now and is doing a good job. Okay, close the door here. Yeah. Okay. Nope. You know, there's one thing that I wanted to mention that probably none of you from your generations remember. One of the most famous pair of names that we had in the family is Lou and Liddy. And 
Lou and Liddy were the team of white horses that Dad used to have on the old horse hearse when he had the horse hearse. Louie and Liddy were the names of the white horses, and they were both white horses. Everything's going fine, but my memory is getting short. We had a lady come to a viewing not long ago at the mortuary, and she was, as she passed the casket, I knew the family well enough, her and her family well enough, that I was sure that there was no immediate relationship to them. But she had a difficult time as she passed the casket to see the man that was in the casket. And I watched her carefully, and she went to the back of the room, and there was, back in the back end of the showroom, uh, in tears. And I thought, well, I better go see what's the matter with her. And I went back to her, and I and saw how much she was mourning, and I says, why didn't you bring your husband with me, with you? And she says, my hell, Roy, you just buried him six weeks ago. So that's why she was mourning. And that's how my memory is. I'd forgotten about her husband dying that recently. That plain enough? One of the things that I've missed in the last few years is the passing of Arlene, who was my wife, and she was very much a part of the business. She was, she was a beautician, she did hairdo, and she did most of the hair of the people, and she helped on the makeup, which was a big thing. Rog is good on makeup. Rog and Arlene are both better than I do. But one thing Arlene was concerned about is when older people died, how few people came to the funeral. And she said, Roy, if you want a crowd to come to your funeral, the thing to do is to die young. And, she's wait and she says, and we've waited too long. That wasn't the case in the case of her death. There was a big crowd to her funeral. We had at the church and the church was full. Back in dad's days, there's a lot of things that were different than they were now and things have been perfected especially these chemicals. <coughs> these chemicals are made so that there's lots more cosmetic effect. <coughs> now, as though I, although I didn't see it, I've been told that when he first started going into the homes to do embalming with his cooling board, he put the bottles of embalming chemicals, concentrated chemicals, in his back pocket and carried them in his back pocket into the homes and then diluted them in water in the homes. And of course, after he's completed it, his embalming and had to have the dressing completed, he folded up the equipment and took it back and re retired it by taking, carrying it back with him after he had completed building, building body, he folded, folded up this equipment and it was taken home. In fact, the equipment is old enough that it's a little difficult for me to handle we still have it, and we can show any of you, any of you ever come to the place. We'll show you what it looks like, actually, rather than on film. When that folds up here, and makes quite a neat, neat package to carry. It's carried here, here back into, to take back to the home, and of course, then it was put in a cart that I was pulled by a horse, and buggy, a horse and buggy outfit rather than automobiles. This is the before the days of automobiles. Thanks to Steve and Matt for coming down and taking taking this 
time to do this and prepare this for us. We appreciate both of you. Thanks to you. No, no problem. We love it. Okay. Let me see how we're doing here.